Benenge, and I have the honor uh, this evening to be your program director. And an additional honor is that I've been part of the SAD uh, alumni class of 2006. And so I'm glad to be part of the SAD family and to be amongst you today. This evening marks the celebration of SAD's existence for 10 years. And tonight we will be celebrating the achievements of SAD students and we will honor those that have contributed to the birthing and growth of SAD throughout this period. Uh, to kick off the evening, I'd like to call upon the stage our current chairman, Mr. Sendrick Masondo, to give the opening remarks. Thank you. Two thousand and fourteen is the most important year in the history of our country, as we are celebrating twenty years of democracy. Despite many challenges facing our country, South Africa is still a wonderful country, a country full of opportunities. With all the opportunities and talent we have in our country, we are facing a huge skills shortage in our country. It is not the problem of the government alone, but a problem for all of us. Without these skills it will be difficult for us to address the challenges facing our country. It is for that reason that SAP was formed 11 years ago. SAP was formed to address the problem of the acute shortage of actuarial skills within the black community in our country. This has been done through unearthing and harnessing mathematical and analytical skills amongst black students in order to expose and help them to capitalize on career opportunities in the field of actuarial science. Today, we celebrate the achievement of young people who have recently qualified as actuaries and new graduates who have completed degrees toward this field. We at SAP were proud to have consistently contributed to capacity building in our country for the past 11 years through investing in the development of actuaries. Today, we have 13 qualified actuaries and 130 graduates. This has been a result of hard work by students, universities, and of course, SAD staff under the leadership of Ms. Nogwandam Kiza. Tonight, I also want to acknowledge and thank our current sponsors, Sazria, the founding donor, INCITA, Bank CETA, ECIC, FNB, Deloitte, Discovery, and Alexander Forbes for their continued financial support. I also want to thank other sponsors who might have helped us in the past 11 years. I'm sure they are all proud of the success of this program. It is important to make the right choices in life. In many critical situations, such as among options for schools, university, profession or spouse, it is not enough to choose. One needs to go a step further and remain dedicated to the cause. Tonight, we'll witness the talent of our country as we celebrate the success of our future leaders. To our alumni and recipients of the awards, you've stayed the course and remained determined until the end. Congratulations for your achievements. To our distinguished guest, you're most welcome. Please relax and enjoy the evening with us. Thank you. The funny thing about our profession is that although it's small, relative to other professions, if you think the number of actuaries in the world compared to the number of accountants or the number of engineers, but it's also vast as well in that as a South African actuary, you can apply your trade easily anywhere in the world. And I think I'd like this message to go out to especially the new SAD alumni members that truly the world is your oyster because although you can be born and bred in South Africa, you, your bread can be buttered anywhere in the world. And, <laughs> and I think the keynote speaker that I'm about to call upon stage now is a classic example of this. Mr. Peter Temple. Uh, who is responsible currently for Genre UK, Ireland, and South Africa's life and health business. Uh, prior to joining Genre, prior to joining Genre, he was employed by Southern Life Momentum, 
and was a member of the executive committee of the Merge Company at the time. He has a Bachelor of Business Science in Actuarial Science and he's a fellow of the Institute of Actuaries. He's currently the president of the Association, the Actuarial Society of South Africa, and he is the chairman of the Society's Education Board. So Mr. Peter Temple, if you'd kindly join us on stage, please. Good evening, everybody. It's great to see you here, and I'm very pleased to be here. In particular, um, it's uh, an honor to be here with the members of the board of uh, SAADP um, and Zasora Maposa, the founding chairman, as well. It is great um, to be able to be here. Um, I'm quite an informal person, and, um, and so I'm going to try to keep this as informal as possible rather than as formal as possible. And um, when I was preparing, I, was, I asked, you know, what should I speak about? Um, and I was uh, given some hints in terms of the things I should try and cover, so I will try and cover those things. Um, but uh, when I was looking and doing some research, I, um, I stumbled across a guy by the name of Oswald Jacoby. Does anybody know who Oswald Jacoby is? No, nobody here. Um, does anybody play bridge here? Anybody going to admit that they play bridge? <laughs> um, did anybody play poker here? Now, there's a whole lot of people I'm sure that do play poker, um, they're just not prepared to admit that either. Um, if you were to play bridge or to play poker, you would know him. I don't play either of those, but um, I, um, I want to talk a little bit about him and just give you a bit of background to who he is. And you might say, well, why do you want to do that? Well, just bear with me for a second um, as we talk about him. Um, Oswald Jacoby um, started learning to play bridge at the age of six. Um, he had his first tournament at the age of 10. Uh, at the age of 15, he lied about his age and went and registered to become a, a, a fighter in the First World War. Um, and they accepted him and took him in. Um, apparently, he spent most of his time playing bridge and poker um, during the First World War. Um, and uh, he survived that. Um, he then he went to university, to Columbia University. He dropped out of university, and that's not something I would recommend you do, so don't take that lesson. Um, but he went and studied uh, actuarial science um, through the Society of Actuaries in America at that time. And he qualified as an actuary, the youngest ever person to qualify in America at the age of 21. Um, so he obviously was an, quite an ex exceptional guy. Um, if you search the internet for him, you'll find out that actually some of the things he could do, um, he would bet anybody that he'd multiply six digit numbers together quicker than anybody else. Apparently he could do it instantaneously. Um, so he actually could take a six-digit number, multiply it with another six-digit number, and give you the answer immediately. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody here that can do that, but if they can, I guess that's quite impressive. Uh, I certainly couldn't. Um, in the Second World War, he again went into the army um, during the Second World War, and he became a member of a counterintelligence group. And um, they used their skills um, to solve problems which uh, the, the people of the time probably didn't think were that important, um, but actually turned it out, many people say, could have changed the, the course of the war. Um, so one of the things, for instance, that they, they did was they found out that um, a lot of planes, a lot of bombers were being shot down. So if you were a bomber pilot, um, generally, I think nine out of 10 bomber pilots never made it back because what they did is they flew over Germany, um, dropped the bombs for however long, um, and basically either ran out of fuel or were shot down. Um, so one out of 10 made it back. So they started figuring out, well, actually, if one out of 10 bomber pilots makes it back, we really should do something about this. So they gave it to the counterintelligence group, of which um, Oswald Jacoby was one of them. Um, and they asked them whether they could solve the problem. Um, and what they thought they would do is they'd look at the bombers that came back, and they would look at those bombers, and then what they would do is they would make them stronger. So um, look and see where all the bullet holes are um, and make that part of the bomber stronger, which sounds like quite a, a reasonable thing to do. But these guys in the counterintelligence group very quickly figured out that actually that's exactly the wrong thing to do. Um, because the guys who've made it back, the bombers that have made it back, are the survivors. What you really need to do is need to be looking at the bombers that didn't make it back. Um, and they were going to fortify um, the places where there were lots of bullet holes, which were the wings, um, the engines, etc. cetera. Um, but actually, that's not where they needed the fortification. They needed the fortification in the windshields and everything else. So in fact, what these guys did is they figured out where you should fortify the bombers. And they re that resulted in six out of 10 bombers making it back. 
um, after their bombing raids. Um, and so obviously that's a significant difference in terms of the war. And um, these were, were guys um, who were, and one of them was an actuary, um, who was, was doing this. Really changed things um, in, in the long run. Um, Oswald Jacoby also, he wrote 17 books. In fact, you'll find many of them today still available. If you play poker or bridge or anything else, um, you will find that he's one of the, the, the foremost people. Um, he wrote 10,000 articles um, on these things as well. Um, and he was an actuary. Um, so what did I tell you about Oswald Jacoby? Well, I, I told you about him for three reasons, and I, I would like to touch on the three reasons um, because I think they affect all of us as actuaries or aspiring actuaries uh, here today. Frank Reddington, who was recently voted as the, the best English actuary, or whatever you want to call him, the most uh, person of the most prominent. So if you're studying actuarial science, you should know something about Reddington and have heard something about his formulas. Um, and uh, he said, an actuary is who, who is only an actuary is not an actuary. An actuary who is only an actuary is not an actuary. Um, and I think that's sort of one of the strongest messages that I want to give to you today. In fact, um, an actuary is not just about the skills that you will learn, the technical skills that you will learn. In fact, it's the application of those skills into many different fields. Um, and so that's the first thing that I think is quite important. So if you look at the life of Oswald Jacoby, he took his actuarial skills and he applied them into the, uh, the fields of poker uh, and bridge. Um, and hopefully you won't all do that as well. But um, the reality is you can apply these skills into many different places. Uh, and I'd really encourage you to think of yourself like that. I consider myself, even though I'm the president of the Actuarial Society, I consider myself to be first and foremost a businessman uh, and secondly an actuary. Um, my actuarial skills have given me a skill set that I can apply in the business environment um, in South Africa and wider fields. Um, but I, it's not the, the actuarial set itself that matters um, to me. It's given me a, a way of thinking. Um, it's given me an approach to solving problems. Um, and, and that's the way I would encourage you to think about your actuarial skills. Uh, don't let the word actuary define who you are. Uh, rather, be defined by who you are and have your actuarial skills as part of that. The second thing I think is quite a good lesson um, for us is that uh, as actuaries, uh, many actuaries are seen to have um, a sole life of being an actuary only. Um, you've probably heard many jokes about actuaries and how they want to work all the time um, and et cetera. Um, but actually, I think um, you need to have a life outside of actuarial science. Um, actuaries need to be interesting people too. Um, so I would encourage you to, um, to be an interesting person um, like Oswald Jacoby. Um, he had a life outside of his career as an actuary. Um, I, I committed myself when I, um, when, I, when I finished qualifying that I would one day learn how to fly a plane. Um, uh, my wife wasn't overly enthusiastic about that idea um, when I started. Um, and, uh, and eventually I, I'm now getting to the situation where I am learning how to fly a plane. Um, my children have grown up, so I think she feels I'm more expendable at this point in time. Um, <laughs> But, um, but actually, I think that's a valuable thing for us to learn, is that actually, while we have particular skills, don't major on those skills alone. Um, actually, look at the wider, wider world and say, what else can you do? Um, play bridge, um, sign up for playing poker, or whatever it is um, you want to do, figure it out, uh, and, and make your life more than just actuarial science. The third thing, and that's, I know that's, that's hard for some of you, particularly when you've been studying, you're not yet qualified, but I'd really encourage you to do that. The third thing um, that I think uh, I want to say is, um, is that I think you need to use your skills to change this country and to be involved in the change in this country. Um, I'm not a believer in um, wanting you wanting to take your skills to another country. So while, um, uh, that was, while we do have international recognition, uh, and that is part of, of being an actuary, and you can go somewhere else, I think you need to apply your skills here, and I'd really encourage you to keep um, staying in South Africa and work in South Africa and work um, to improve South Africa further. We have fantastic skills and we have a great difference to make. And so I'd really encourage you to do that. I do travel regularly overseas. And one of the things I've spoken at um, the Actuarial Society uh, of South Africa's, um, they, well, not South Africa, but the South African actuaries in London have a, have a meeting, have a group together. And I believe they have 500 people um, on, their, on their mailing list. Uh, I think that's a real issue for us, that we've got 500 qualified actuaries who should be in South Africa, actually in London. Um, so I'd really encourage you to stay here and to make a difference to the society. Um, the SAADP program is obviously funded, funded um, you to, to qualify, 
Um, and I don't think they, their intention was to fund you to qualify to go work in uh, Australia or the United Kingdom or anywhere else. Um, and so really I would encourage you to stay here in South Africa and get involved in South African society. Um, if you were at any of the, the conventions, the Actuarial Society conventions recently, you would have uh, heard some of the plenary speakers talking to us and encouraging us. Uh, Trevor Manuel spoke at our convention two years ago, and um, he encouraged us to get involved in education in South Africa. We have a great role to play, particularly in the side of maths education. Um, there's opportunities for us to get involved in government things. We, as the society, have been involved in demographics. We've been involved with the National Development Plan. Um, we're involved with uh, discussions with Treasury, and um, there's been a call for us to be involved in various places, including municipalities and other places. And I think we can use our skills in those places, and I really would encourage you to do that. So those are the three things I, I wanted to just to highlight um, for you. If you hear this, this uh, today, you probably are an actuary. I know there will be one or two exceptions to that. Um, and if you might be sitting there and saying, well, actually, I'm still not convinced that an actuary can make that much difference and, um, and does make that much difference in South Africa. So I thought I'd sort of finish with one particular fact. Um, the, the one particular fact that I wanted to mention was that um, in South Africa, 50% of institutional funds are managed by actuaries. I don't know if you know that. Um, I don't know if you knew how much institutional funds are in South Africa, but uh, that's roughly um, 1,000 billion rand. Um, so that's 1,000 billion rand. That's 75% of South Africa's GDP, um, and that is managed by actuaries. Um, so we have a significant responsibility in the country um, with regards to investments. Many of our largest financial organizations are run by actuaries, as you probably will know. Um, companies like Discovery and Outurance were started by actuaries and are run by actuaries. Um, Momentum, MMI, is run by an actuary. Uh, there are many actuaries involved in, in senior positions in large organizations. Um, and those things are all great. And the, the nice thing about it is, is we're now making inroads into wider fields as well now. We're not just involved in the financial services industry. Um, quite recently, uh, Vodacom phoned up the Actuarial Society and we're looking to hire 30 actuaries to be involved um, in their business and they're, and they're, and they're looking at their, their numbers and being involved in the analytics of their business. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to be involved. One of the, 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 the people who's involved with um, the SADP program, FNB, um, they currently have 100 actuarial students working in FNB, uh, whereas in the past we had nobody working, no actuaries working in banking. Uh, really, the, the employment scene for actuaries has significant, significantly grown. I'm, I'm very pleased to say that I'm not aware of anybody who's unemployed as an actuary. Um, the last time I, I said that, somebody came to me straight afterwards and said, I'm unemployed. Um, so I'm probably going to have a list of you um, coming up afterwards. But, but actually, interesting enough, when I did engage with the person, um, it turned out actually they were unemployed, but they had had three job offers to go to Johannesburg, and they lived in Cape Town, and they didn't want to move to Johannesburg. So I think that's sort of pushing the limits of unemployment. But, um, but the reality is there are lots of opportunities for, for actuaries. Um, somebody asked us, in fact, that we had a meeting with the Department of Higher Education, and they asked us, how many actuaries is enough for South Africa? And we said, we don't know, but we know what we've got now is not enough. Um, there's plenty more um, space for actuaries. Um, there are plenty of jobs available. And in fact, the fields are growing uh, that you can be involved in. Uh, data analytics is one of the biggest fields of growth in the world at the moment. And, and actuaries have great data analytical skills. And, and we could actually be um, dominating that field if we had the people to be able to fill it. Um, so you have a great future, really, looking forward. Uh, qualify as actuaries for those of you who are not qualified, stay in the country um, and make a real difference uh, here. I really appeal to you, those of you who are qualified and, and involved as well, think about giving back um, as to how you can be involved in the education of actuaries and the education uh, of the country as well. Um, the Actuarial Society is, is looking for people to be involved and get involved, and I would really encourage you um, to get involved. And if you are here this evening and you want to get more involved, please come speak to me or come speak to Mike, uh, who's our CEO of the Actuarial Society, and um, we'd be more than happy to get you involved. Um, we really think we can make a difference in this country, uh, and I'd encourage you to do that. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Mm -hmm.